Let's get started with poison manipulation. A severely notorious while at the same time severely misunderstood power that can and will alienate most from trying to interact with you, users of toxokinesis can create, shape, and manipulate various poisons and poisonous substances. That Latin prefix was a little on the nose for me, but that makes this next part easier, so let's continue. Now we all know what poison is, or at least have heard of it in its many, many, many incarnations throughout the many, many, many years of human existence. So with that being stated, it's time for me to continue in the ways of the Shea by talking down you and ruining your day. A poison is a substance that is capable of causing the illness or death of a living organism when introduced or absorbed. That definition right there sets the tone of this video. A substance capable of causing illness or death. Hmm. Substance. Hmm. Maybe I'm beating a dead horse here, but that's a very vague and generalized term. Meaning, the actual concept of poison that this power is based off of really has no definite shape, form, or a belief system, I guess. A Poison can range from getting dirt rubbed into an open wound to overdosing on medication, having an allergic or negative reaction to an everyday or normally harmless substance like air, water, or dust, all the way to being saturated by various forms of radiation and suffering from said harmful effects. It doesn't matter if it's solid or wet, if you're a Romeo and you just swallowed something in front of a Juliet, if it doesn't belong in or around your body, it can be considered a type of poison. As you just heard it did, there's a lot of stuff to get into on this video. And before we sink into the muck and bile that this power really has to offer, I needs to let you guys know that you guys have nothing to fear from the Shag and his mysterious ways. I'm gonna stop rhyming now. But as far as I'm concerned, don't expect any tricks or any deception. You can even leave your drink container open around me because if I were to be a dick and poisonize you, then I wouldn't have the right to ask you wonderful nerds and nerdettes to hit that like and subscribe button. But if you still don't trust me and you just have your own poison immunity, then hit that share button so you can pass that on to others who might be curious about this sick power. <laughs> Get it? Sick? Anyway. If you're just here for the applications, uses, and users of this power, then skip ahead to this time. But if you're ready to take a ride down this venomous slide, then uh, cover your open wounds and let's go. Let's do it. Like stated earlier, poisons or the concept of a poison or intoxicant have been around since humans have been a dying. We have innumerate tales of kings and leaders of men who came, saw, and conquered only to be brought down and crippled by contagion. <laughs> it's no secret that poisoning someone, obviously, is more than likely the easiest and sneakiest way to get rid of them. And from roughly about 4500 BC to the present time, it sure did get a lot easier. From various parts of plants and animals to the more taboo and refined processes that we have now, poisons have always been used for weapons, the development of anti-venoms, and the creation of medicine. With concepts such as goo or jikan represented a traditional Asian preparation of poison where you would seal several venomous creatures, egg, you know, centipedes, snakes, scorpions, inside a closed container, they would then devour each other and allegedly their toxins would coalesce into a single survivor whose body would then be fed upon by the larva of, I guess, whatever's in there. I don't know where the larva came from. Making the last surviving larva contain the newly complex poison with esoteric benefits, you know, magical stuff to it. But while myths and legends may or may not have had a direct hotline based poison DTs the way we see poison now, Ones we do know about take the form and shape of something else, but will still possess innate harmful properties to them that can be conflated with poisons or poisoning. Going back to the before four times, numerous creatures and monsters of the mythological world were conflated with poisons, from the ordinary and simple snake and scorpions, to the more deadly and fictitious hydras, chimeras, and world-ending reptiles of any culture. In fact, the concept of poison was so intertwined with them that even deities of their respective mythologies were subject to its harmful effects. But from there, we also have Akles, the Greek goddess of poisons who may or may not have been a primordial. She was said to have been linked with dark mist, which fogs or blinds mortal eyes, often in death. So this sort of explains where we got the trope of poisoning, distorting vision and making you blind. And in roughly the same era, we have Mephites, the Roman personification of toxic vapors, which <laughs> makes sense because Rome was a very unsanitary place, so harmful smells would be a given. 
So just to get the record straight, when we refer to poison, it usually implies that the object of discussion is just a toxic no-no and is to be avoided at all costs. But there is a clear line of delineation that takes the form of two branches on the metaphorical tree that is poison, and that is venomous and poisonous. First off, both venom and poison are classified as toxins and are normally produced by organisms in nature. But when someone refers to something as poisonous, it usually applies to organisms that unload or release toxins when they're in danger, more likely in a reactionary manner. This can be the result of an accidental or light touch to the more extreme cases like ingestion. But something venomous refers to something that can poison others via a bite or sting and inject their toxins, making this branch more predatory in nature. So it could be safe to assume that venomous creatures like snakes or spiders aren't usually immune to toxins, let alone their own, while poisonous beings like certain frogs or pufferfish have a way to deal with toxins, which explains why they can survive their own. Maybe. Who knows? We don't have everything figured out. Some poisonous creatures aren't even immune to their own toxins. So now you've heard this before, too, that the difference between medicine and poison is the dosage. But poisons just don't refer to the chemical or medical based versions because too much of anything is a bad thing. Obviously, the average human is more than likely going to encounter accidental contamination, infection or intoxication through poor hygiene or alcohol rather than being assassinated by mysterious poison liquid. And in case you didn't know, consumable alcohol is a poison, which is why it kills brain cells and makes people dumb. Just, just an FYI. Nobody paid me to say that. That's just an idea that popped into my head. But in order for poison to affect you in the way that TV tells us it does, it more or less needs to enter the bloodstream of a particular target, which is why the risk of infections are so deadly in humans from cuts or rusty nails and why they test your blood in a blood alcohol content test because you can find out anything from the blood. But you can also suck out a toxin from a venomous bite without risk to yourself or lick an open wound to clean it if you're desperate. But that'll only work if you have no additional open wounds for the venom or intoxicant to travel back into. The reason why is because these types of toxins are of a protein background, which makes it susceptible to heat. And because heat causes proteins to change their shape, that changes the way that the poisons can affect people, animals and plants, I guess. While other types of poisons, such as those of the elemental, chemical, or mineral origin like arsenic, lead, radiation-based poisoning, or air and water intoxication, heat won't change its impact. Instead, you'll need to nullify whatever toxic properties they possess by having another element, mineral, or chemical do the work, usually by absorption or negation. With all that being said about an ability like this, there's no wonder why some people wouldn't want to be around you. For all intents and purposes, the poisonous person is more than likely extremely lethal to touch because their body naturally produces universally lethal toxins. And this is doubly ensured if they produce radiation or carry a host of diseases that can cause poison. With, of course, the user themselves being immune to these hazards, so that's pretty much bad news for everyone else. There are nearly unlimited ways that this can happen, ranging from falling into a vat of chemicals or biohazards to being cursed as a walking pandemic with an uncontrollable touch of death, or can even act like an autonomous, subconscious, deadly defense power, try saying that five times fast, that can't distinguish friend from foe. And if they really drew the short end of the stick, the poisonous person kills those who they touch because they must feed on their life force for some reason. Or you could just be a lizard based being of any shape or form or an insect person of any shape or form because those two are more than likely stereotypically going to carry some type of poison or toxin. This is one of those abilities that are pretty easy to miss when they first manifest, sometimes resulting because of the an accidental power activation or power awakening. That little tidbit right there may or may not cause them to harm those close to them. And that'll later cause a host of psychological related problems, which add to how toxic that they're going to be. Or in a more positive light, poison can be used as a symbolic vector the same way dust and sand are which will lead to a transformation or a power increase through endurance testing or something like that. But if you're going to go that route, it's normal to portray the user or the survivor of a poison event being horrifically scarred or monstrous after the fact. So, uh, well, <laughs> I, I mean, with all that being said, is it really any surprise that those that represent that poison gang usually embrace their id and become villains? 
if the theory of personality based superpowers had anything to do with it, which I believe it does, then the user of this power probably wasn't a very good person to begin with. Additional evidence to support that lies within the concept of honor, or simply put, a fair, honorable fight among enemies. If I were to paraphrase that concept pretty quickly, it basically means that honorable people fight with nothing to hide and nothing to gain, and may the best man win. While using poison, on the other hand, is evil and cowardly, which explains the old and outdated saying, poison is a woman's weapon. Well, I mean, it doesn't really explain it because if you look at the murder statistics, that particular subject doesn't prove that tidbit of history right. This kind of antagonist just isn't difficult to combat directly, but may also be very versatile and sinisterly creative in the many ways that they apply their power. They could dip darts within their poisonous tears or saliva, they could use sweat from their brow to salt and sterilize a field or you. Try explaining that to your wife or your husband. They could turn an open womb into their enemy's nightmare fuel by cutting themselves to poison their weapon or just let someone hack them to pieces so they can spread their bile infected body fluid everywhere. <laughs> Some of them might even have their poison be corrosive or slightly acidic, which begs the question of how that survives inside their body, but far be it from me. Sometimes they'll look out at the army of Impotus coming their way and say, and drop their weapons and proceed to nuke the area with their toxic powers, which will more than likely use a form of radioactive poisoning or a toxic miasma generation. If their ability is disease-based, they'll make an excellent plague master or be mistaken as a horseman of the apocalypse. No matter what archetype you choose or how you want to use this power, if you're going to leave the world worse off than it was, you pretty much have a user of this power. This explains why we modernized the term poison or toxic to refer to something or someone who has, for lack of a better word, a harmful and unproductive effect on any given situation. And because the majority of humans are all emotional and crap, this can bring up feelings of revulsion or fear and anger with all that coupled with the unknowable, sneaky and deceptive factors that poison innately possesses make this ability extremely dangerous. So dangerous that the effects range from simple facial discoloration accompanied by, you know, vomiting or back doors vomiting, usually that's played for comedy, all the way to more serious physical deformation and or destruction. But hey, it's worth noting that there's no standard poisonous person in terms of appearance. Some are basic looking, others are obviously visually poisonous, and a fair number are pretty nice to look at or even drop dead gorgeous, which is even worse because you want to approach them. Common colors associated with a power like this range from your various shades of violet to your yellows and or greens. These colors, though, will normally have a nasty neon-like quality to them, which allows them to glow in low-light conditions or stand out from your typical liquid, or the poison will carry a skull and crossbones. Typical stats for a power such as this range as the various types of poisons <laughs> exist out there, but let's just say low to high levels of attack power because of its ascetic or corroding effects, low to high levels of speed, which may vary depending on how potent said poison is and how you want that to translate to your character, low to high levels of defense, this one is also dependent on how potent your poison is, you know, how resilient it is against its respective cure, and how that aspect translates to your character, and extreme versatility, like a lot. Considering the various types of poisons and the fact that there are still ways to poison people that we don't have the current technology level to determine how to fight against or detect, yeah, that's a lot of versatility. Now, I want to preference this list by stating what I said earlier, that there are numerous types and forms of poison. And normally when people think about poisons, they normally mean the liquid forms that can be ingested or injected. But for the sake of this video and my sanity, I'll be using any example I find because Poison is poison, I just wanted to preference that. Now with the power to manipulate poison comes the natural ability to attack with, defend with, and control poison with poison attacks. The user can create their own source of poison completely separate from outside sources with poison generation. Or if they wanna alter their own poison but give it more corrosive properties, they can do so via acidic poison generation. But in order for all this toxicity to more or less be of use, it would make a measure of sense to give it a form of mass and density via poison solidification, which is normally the first step in creating forms and shapes, both simple and complex, via toxicinetic constructs. 
Users at the next level will be able to use the ability to generate and make shapes out of poison and infuse it into whatever combative capabilities you possess with Toxikinetic Combat. And the worst part about this power, or the best part if you're a glass half full guy like me, is that this extremely hazardous ability can get its hooks into you through the most minuscule of contact with poison transferal. <laughs> and with poison inducement, it'll actually latch onto you and begin to cause whatever effects that are intended via infection. And because that concept of infection really has no limit, in theory, it would be able to affect all forms of matter if it exists in a breathable form such as vapor or aerosol air and causes the user to cough and choke, then you, my nerd and nerdettes, have a user of miasma generation. If the element were to be infused into a solid element, perhaps one connected to the most famous solid, aka Earth, then said poison can affect the target through the sensation of touch. And arguably, you can say plants take that category well, in regards to notoriety. So, with poisonous plant generation, the user can create various flora-based constructs that carry toxic properties, aka poison ivy, the plant, not the person. And if you want to go with the flow and freak people out, then you can infuse poison into whatever liquid you come in contact with. <laughs> Let's be honest here, the easiest liquid to come in contact with are the ones you naturally possess <laughs> with poisonous body fluid <laughs> generation. <laughs> God. But don't think that poison is just for the cooler elements because although fire and heat are known to fight off poisonous effects, that only refers to organic and protein-based poisons. Fire has no effect against toxins of any other origin. So that means if one were to bring the heat while still being disgusting, you can combine the two via poisonous fire generation. The range of effects from a toxic infection from any of the previous states of matter that we just mentioned can range from pain inducement, because your immune system and your body are reacting horribly to its effects, paralysis inducement, because for some reason the guy who infected you had weapons or attacks coated in a neurotoxin, poison that affects the nerves, necrosis inducement, by having the poison in your bloodstream rot away your body but still keep you alive for it, and if you're really unlucky, or lucky enough not to have to suffer, remember glass half full, death inducement is one you're going to have to deal with because the toxins are shutting down your body from the inside. Higher tier users will be able to take in outside sources of poison completely separate from their own or familiar source of poison with no detrimental effects via poison absorption. And since you have a habit of taking in outside toxins, safely I hope, it would make sense that it would have an effect on your person, and if you're fortunate, a positive one, with poison empowerment. And since you can empower yourself with poison in whatever form it takes, you would be able to cancel or at least lessen its more harmful effects, or you know, at least know how to do that, with poison negation. You want to play mad scientist or apathetic doctor with someone who probably isn't yourself? Well, then somehow dilute your poisonous powers and try to heal like they did in the days of old via poison healing. And since you're forcing poison to do something it normally doesn't do, it would be safe to assume that you have a certain affinity for the substance, allowing you to channel it into the very energy that gives you life, giving you a poisonous aura. And if your life energy is poisonous, I'm pretty sure it'd have the same effect on your physical form via poison mimicry. While the best of the best, those that have mastered this ability or at least understand it on a level to where they can be called master level, can project or emit whatever words you want to choose, a massive amount of poison and or toxins of any nature and infect a wide ranging area contaminating all and leaving this area inhospitable for any who aren't the original user of said power with toxic area. And from there, they can choose how habitual they want the area to be, for how long, and choose who exactly will survive, <laughs> and those who won't, by manipulating the actual toxin levels of whatever poison-based powers they choose with toxicity manipulation. Hmm. I think it's fair to say that if you're using poison for any of the applications I listed previously, then you will need a form of poison immunity 
in order to not succumb or fall victim to your own abilities. That's like an assassin cutting themselves on their own poison blade because they dropped it on their foot or something. That's, that's just silly. But the funny thing about this power is that even though no one will really want to get near you because of what you can do, for some reason you'll always find yourself running from a crowd of angry commoners who are tired of coughing every time you open your mouth. So the next best thing instead of fighting them all is using the poison that you naturally control to enhance whatever locomotive capabilities you possess via venom transportation. Or double down on your life leeching and cell corroding ways by creating a type of toxin so potent and so deadly that it can contaminate any and everything from people to fruity pebbles. This final frontier of poison is so uber and so top of the line that it's often considered a one hit KO and can't be countered by any other means of antibody immunity, science serum, or healing factor with ultimate poison. And there you have it. Poison manipulation in some kind of shell that you probably don't want to touch because it's it's poison. Maybe. This ability is deadly for all the I mean for all the wrong reasons. There are dozens of ways to counter this ability, but they aren't exactly weaknesses per se. The only true weakness for a power like this would be medicine manipulation, kind of, sort of, which I have done a video on in the before four times. Not a very popular vid. It was kind of rough, so I don't blame you guys. But the reason I say kind of, sort of, is because poison is known for its corrupting and corroding influence. And what do you need to corrupt and corrode? That's right, other forms of matter. So basically, sending any matter-filled material at this ability can cause the user to smirk and play the metaphorical Uno reverse card. So now not only do you have to worry about a poison touch, but now you also have to worry about that poison touch making your water wave, fire blast, or even the air you breathe into sonic scream poisonous and leaving an unintended effect on you. Not to mention that this is an ability that is very good for giving the user some breathing room. So while you're panicking because you can't figure out a way to touch them, their smirk is going to turn into a full-blown smile when they start to see the helplessness on your face. But for the user, they might be unable to create poison themselves and instead have to manipulate outside sources. They might not even be immune to their own poison the way they think they should be. And lastly, the user's own knowledge, skills, and natural talents will determine how far you go with an ability like this. So stay away from me. I, I, I'm so serious. Stay away from me. And now, with all that out of the way, it's time to place this ability on the scale. Poison manipulation is pretty dang awesome as far as abilities go. If you still don't believe me after all that, then go ask Bill Bell DeVoe. They can break it down way better. Than no, no, that's copyright. Bad Shay. You know better than that. Maybe. But anyway, on a scale of 1 to 10, the Shay scaling system gives this power a sickening 9. His power exists everywhere, and in so many different forms, it's literally impossible to defend against the concept of it. The only true blind spot to a power like this is that it needs a medium to travel through. And honestly, <laughs> that might not be true either. If you think differently, feel free to let me know what you think in the comment section. Help your boy out. Thanks for watching. You guys think of any more applications for this power? Jot it down in the comment section. Start a discussion. The index doesn't grow without you. I'll be back with an entirely new power, breakdown, and analysis pretty soon. Deuces.